evening. So it's all good. I'm sorry. I... Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, just to remind the council, there's a work session meeting following the CFD meeting, and then there is a regular meeting that must start at 6 p.m. due to a public hearing. After that meeting, we will have a special meeting. So that we're going to call this joint CFD agenda to order. Uh, everyone but Bill Stipp. So what I need, um, I need a motion from a board member or the vice to excuse uh, board member Stipp from this meeting. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by uh, board member Campbell and a second by board member Laura Town. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor, Vice Chairman Pizzillo. Aye. Board Member Osborne? Aye. Board Member Lortano? Aye. Board Member Campbell? Aye. Board Member Homan? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Pass the 6 0. Great. We have no communication uh, tonight, but now is the time for a citizen who would like to address the city district on any non agenda item. Do we have any cards? No, Mayor. All right. Chairman. Is there anybody in the audience that didn't fill out a card that would like to speak? Okay. For that, we'll go on to the consent agenda. Will the district clerk please read the consent agenda item 6.1 by title only, please? Approved draft minutes from a CFD special joint meeting held on June 16, 2014. Thank you. So we need to approve those minutes. So does anybody from the public wish to uh, remove a night? Well, we already did that on the consent agenda. All right, so could I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from uh, Vice Chair Bazillo and a second from um, Board Member Campbell. Roll call vote, please. Board Member Osborne? Aye. Board Member Loritano? Aye. Board Member Campbell? Aye. Board Member Holman? Aye. Vice Chairman Pazillo? Aye. Chairman Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Great. Did I make that specific? That was the draft minutes in the CFD. Did we? Okay, just want to make sure. Thank you. All right, let's go on to the business. Uh, one item, but we will include three separate votes on this. So the one item uh, on business tonight is a public hearing for the feasibility report submitted in connection with the proposed insuance of a not to exceed six million of special assessment bonds for uh, Australia Mountain Ranch. Public hearing open. Larry Lane, Finance Director, to present. Larry? Uh, thank you, Chairman Lord. If I could get the presentation up on the screen. Um, thank you. And uh, as that's coming up, I, I want to start by um, introducing the finance team that's here plenty tonight. Uh, they're, they're in the audience, most of whom you've seen before, some of whom you've just seen the names, and uh, pleased that they're all here. Uh, first of all, representing uh, the underwriter, uh, the firm is Stiefel, Nicholas, Bob, Sophia is, is uh, the underwriter that's present. And then uh, bond counsel representing the, the underwriter from the firm of Greenberg Traurig is Michael Capiso and Paul Gales. Um, the assessment engineer that does the assessment methodology is David Yu. Um, from Newland Communities, we have Elper Adley and uh, Peter Tyson. And from Gus Rosenfeld, we have Scott Ruby. And our financial advisor from Wedbush Securities is Larry Given. Um, this is the group that works to put it together. And uh, this is the group that if there's any question you ask tonight that I can't answer, I can guarantee you one of them can give you the answer on this. <coughs> a very uh, talented group of people that have done these types of transactions considerably over the past few years. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what a community facilities district is versus an assessment area. And the reason I'm talking about that is 
that you've heard the terms CFD expressed in many different contexts. Is there a CFD on this property? We get that from title companies. What they're really asking is there an assessment lien on this property from, from a community facilities district. So the, the map that I have up on the screen shows um, the boundaries of the Australia Mountain Ranch Community Facilities District. This district was formed in 1999, if I remember right, and it consists of 9,771 acres. All of that area is within the boundaries of a com community <coughs> facilities district, or most of that area. There's a few uh, boundary issue or move arounds in there, but that generally is the area. So, so the, that is the whole area. What we're talking about tonight is a special assessment lien on the property in the area of, that is labeled towards the bottom, Montecito 2. And that is an area that is uh, yet to develop. Some of it's platted, some isn't. But that is what we're going to be talking about tonight and the infrastructure that will be put in place that will be paid back by the property owners uh, and only the property owners within that blue um, area there, not the property owners throughout the rest of the CFD. This is a diagram a little more um, explicit of the actual area to be assessed. You'll notice there's three parcels that are platted, 9.4, 9.5, and 9.6, kind of in the middle of it there. You see the number two that's kind of at the bottom of that. That's all one planning area. And then up on top, you have number one and 9.8, or parcel 9.8, and those are additional planning areas. I may come back to this slide towards the end of the presentation. One discussion we're going to have is, is a discussion on the value to lien ratio, a coverage, how much coverage we're getting in value of the property compared to the lien placed on the property. And the areas number one and parcel 9.8 in this are the only two areas we're going to talk about in that context where the value to lean on those um, as proposed would be three to one, whereas the rest of this area and all of the other assessments that we've done historically within this, uh, the Australia Mountain Ranch CFD have been four to one or higher. We'll talk about that in a bit, but I wanted you to kind of visualize the parcels that we're talking about in doing that. So what is proposed is that there would be special assessment revenue bonds issued not to exceed $6 million. And those special assessment bonds would uh, facilitate certain infrastructure improvements out there. West Calistoga Drive, about 1,900 lineal feet. South 182nd Drive and West Mountain Vista Drive, about 2,300 linear feet. West Mountain Vista Drive, 20, another 2,800 linear feet, as well as water and sewer line um, improvements in there. And a little map of where, where these improvements are. This is um, a portion, the red is just a portion of the street improvements, and then the 8-inch sewer line and the 12-inch water line. Um, then we show the full roadway improvements uh, in green here, less the sewer line since it's already in there, and then full roadway improvements in the blue, uh, and finally the full roadway improvements on Calistoga. <laughs> All three of these areas, that is the infrastructure that will be placed in with this financing. All of the costs go towards the infrastructure costs. All of these, while well, the feasibility report that you were provided a copy of, uh, that was the nice light reading that looked like this is about 78 pages that you were provided a copy of in that feasibility report it talked about that all of these improvements would be completed by june of 2015. however from talking to the developer this afternoon their target and the realistic expectation is between january and february of 2015 that these improvements will be completed 
15. 15. Oh, earlier. 15. Realistic. Oh, I figured yes. you were pushing it out. Okay. No, realistically, all of this will be 2015. And, but that, that really raises a good question. How can it go Two so quick? Mm -hmm. This, these improvement and all of the improvement districts or assessment bonds, excuse me, I need to clear up my terminology. I've got too many lawyers behind me here, but all of these assessments that are issued out there have been on uh, what we call acquisition districts. In other words, the developer puts in the infrastructure, completes it to the city standards, the city accepts it, and then the, the bond proceeds are used to actually buy the infrastructure rather than us bidding the project and building it after we've sold the bonds. This does several things. One is, is it makes sure it gets taken place in the right amount of time. It, it puts the, the management of it on the developer and the developer also at that point is managing all of the bidding that is required by Arizona statutes and they are all bid publicly to do those to comply with this. Um, so what are the impacts of, of um, the assessments as, as provided? The six million dollars of bonds will be sold and a lien will be placed on the parcels that, that I showed you. The property owners within the Montecito Assessment District will pay the annual debt service payments and they will be added on the property tax bill in the areas that are down to the lot level where there are houses. We don't add them to the property tax bill on the bigger parcels. We mail those ourselves to make sure that we're following up on it um, and to make sure we're getting the cash. But once they get down where it's at the house level, we want it part of the property tax bill that's better for the, for the homeowner because it gets included in their impounds. That's better for us because the county administers it for us and just sends the money and it works better for everyone that way. Um, property within um, the district are currently platted or under planning and are they're owned by the developers and, and one home builder at this point in time. We want this to be completed before there are any sales contracts to, um, to other individual home, homeowners at that point. There will be disclosure, a disclosure pamphlet issued to every home buyer by the builders that will disclose the existence of this lien. And that has happened on all previous assessment bonds that were <laughs> issued out there are assessments that there is a disclosure uh, that identifies what the obligation is and um, how it impacts their property, how it's paid and that type of thing. Estimated cost for a single family home would be about $667 a year. Estimated annual cost for a townhouse would be about $375. Larry, tell me when you say disclose to residents, um, is that at the settlement table? Is that at the uh, pre-buy, you know, when they're looking around in there, is that disclosed then? Where, where in the process is that? Uh, the, the formal signing is part of the closing documents is my understanding, that's the former formal signing that says, yes, I acknowledge that I know about it, but I'm very confident that the builders would keep them informed as they're going through the process that that would exist. I just wondered, I guess each time I ask this, that at the, at the closing table, is it one of those papers that the agent puts in front of them and says, have you read this, and do they sign off on that? It is one that's brought in front of them, have you read this, that's absolutely correct. And when Excuse we me. get vice mayor a question it's my understanding too when they come before us we're going to ask before they sign a sales document before it even gets to closing before they sell sales document they will be notified that this is an additional tax above the city property tax that they'll be paying you know once you get to closing they've already signed a sales contract so before they do the sales contract will they get a copy of this offer yeah please come mm. Uh, I'll ask Alpert to answer okay. that question more specifically. Alpert Adley, Newland Real Estate Group, 5090 North 40th Street. The answer is we've been educating our builders. We've held two meetings uh, this year. We've been educating our realtor, uh, builders, realtors, along with 
builder staff on the existing of the CFD okay. and proper disclosures to potential home buyers. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I just want it before settlement because settlement they've already signed and no surprises when it comes. Because I know when I went to settlement in the area I am, there's a CFD and I already knew it because the salesperson told me that at the same token, you know, they're going to tell you that it's settlement as well. So, okay, thank you. Well, it's always difficult because you don't know what area they're coming from and if they've ever been, if they've even heard of a CFD before. So that's correct. I think all different that's, terminology. I think all that's Probably, very yeah. reassuring, at least that we know that they're really working on that education. Thank you, Mayor. Just another follow-up, Vice Board Member. Um, the single family, the six sixty-seven. There are some places, if I'm, if, and correct me if I'm wrong here, in, in Australia, where they pay us every six months. And then on top of that, there's something on their property tax bill. Okay, that's a very good question. And that, that's what I want to talk about, or what I was kind of referring to earlier. This $667 is only for the assessment lien that we're talking about tonight. Yes. On top of that, all property within the Australia Mountain Ranch Community Facilities District pays a property tax. The rate on that is $1 per hundred assessed valuation. That is over and above this amount. So there's two of them then? There are two different ways that they are paying within the, the CFD. That is correct. Is the other one also on the property tax bill from the treasurer, or is that the one that... That one is always on the property tax uh, bill, regardless of the size of the parcel. That okay, so, so there'll be two CFD bills for this, the main one and this one for, the, for properties within this, this area? Right. Now, the one we're talking about, once these areas get platted and it gets out to the individual homes, right. that's where the county will bill it on the property tax bill also. So they'll ha actually have two items on the property tax bill for this CFD, one for the assessment, one for the property tax within the CFD. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I see another. Go ahead, Larry. Did you want me to? Okay. Okay, uh, so I mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, and don't worry, I'm only at the bottom part of this. I'll go through this for you. I see uh, people looking at a lot of words on this, on this graph. The one area that I, I showed you on the top left-hand portion, parcels 9.8 and number one, the assessed, the, uh, excuse me, the appraised value of that, we did have an independent appraisal done the appraised value of that compared to the assessment, the value is, has to be at least three times the, the actual lien that we're placing on the property. In the past, all the, CF, or all the assessment bonds that we've issued have been four times. This will be the first time we go down to three. There are a couple of things that are important. We have a development agreement. Um, the CFD has a development agreement with the developer um, that talks about this issue. And it says that the sole discretion of the CFD board, that is you, so it's at your sole discretion, if and the, under the totality of all of the facts of the financing do not materially adverse affect the credit worthiness of the, or of the assessment bonds as compared to the assessment bonds if you did it at four to one. So in other words, by moving forward with this at the three to one level on those areas, we're saying there, you would be asked to be saying that the three to one, in your opinion, does not materially affect the value of the bonds. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't think any of the six of you feel just from that statement like, boy, that's a statement I can make real easily, comes within my expertise and so forth. So what I've asked is, is I've asked Bob Casillas representing the underwriter. The underwriter is the person, is the, is the firm that sells the bonds. And I've asked Bob to come up and address this with you to give you his take on the sale of the bonds and whether or not this adversely impacts it so that you have a basis that you can make that consideration. 
Uh, so it's okay, unless you want a question of me first, no. I'm gonna stay here, of course, but I'll ask, ask Bob to come up right now. Bring Mr. Casillas up, that's fine. If you would, please. Good evening, uh, thank you, Mr. Lang. Um, yes, uh, thank you, I appreciate the opportunity to be here before you. Um, we have had the opportunity in the past to underwrite bonds uh, for the CFD before. Uh, in addition, um, our firm uh, for other public agencies, not only in Arizona, but across the country, uh, have a lot of experience underwriting uh, CFD bonds. So uh, when we uh, look at a particular project or uh, underwriting bonds, there are a lot of uh, various factors that we look at. And uh, some of them I just wanted to observe uh, to the board and uh, it, as I go through, if any questions come up, please uh, feel free to, to ask me. But in terms of uh, our decision to underwrite bonds or not, uh, one of the, the criterion, if you will, that we look at is the developer uh, themselves in terms of uh, their experience uh, with these types of developments, their track record. Uh, we look also at uh, the project specific items uh, in terms of the number of acres, the specific <laughs> infrastructure that's going to be uh, financed uh, with the bond proceeds. Uh, we look at the appraisal, the individual who's doing the appraisal. The value to lien is another item that we look at. Uh, we have in the past uh, in Arizona across the country, as I mentioned, have underwritten CFD bonds that have a value to lien, for instance, less than three to one, and at times more than 10 to one. And so you know, that's one of the criterion that we look at. And so it's hard to say in an isolated um, context of a discussion because uh, you weigh it with all the other things that you look at. But that's one of the things that so we look at. So just be sure I have my figures correct. So it's uh, three to one because you, you see the value the, among uh, all of these criteria that you judge? Or is, am I missing something? Um, the appraisal that was done determines the values within the, the CFD and per parcel. There are five uh, assessment areas within this particular CFD. Mr. Lang's um, earlier remarks, I believe, uh, refers to uh, one specific one, uh, area 9.8, uh, area and number one. And so the other four um, parcels do have that four to one value. So it's just this one that would be at a three to one. So I, I wanted to um, uh, share with, with the board just other experiences where we have underwritten bonds at a, at a sliding scale of, of different values, sometimes even three to one. So below three to one, excuse me. So that, that's just one of the, the criterion that we look at. And then in the total, the feasibility reports, another uh, important aspect of the overall process. So when we're looking at everything, this one particular parcel being uh, at three to one versus the other one that four to, that's at four to one uh, doesn't change our opinion that we think we can successfully underwrite and market the bonds as we stand here before you tonight. So we're early on in the process. There's still a lot more work that needs to be done in terms of the disclosure document, uh, other aspects of, of actually looking at the appraisal. So uh, we will continue to work uh, with the district uh, board, your advisor, uh, Mr. Ruby, and his firm. So you, you do have a very good team as we continue with the process. But I just wanted to share with you some of our other experiences around the state and around the country. Any questions? Any vice chair? What do you expect the bond rating to be for this particular uh, six million? Chairman Lord, uh, Vice Board Member uh, Pazillo, we expect right now with our underwriter, uh, we've been talking to uh, around six and a half percent, could be a little lower. Uh, the rates are changing on a daily basis. And so by the time we get ready to actually access the market, uh, you know, the market will be different. But right now we're estimating six and a half percent. Double A, triple A, double A minus. I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Um, these bonds, like your previous bonds, will be non-rated. So uh, a lot of the bond, CFD bond issues are non-rated. Uh, they may be rated after development takes place five or six years after the fact, but these will be non-rated. 
Do you think the three to one coverage will affect the interest rate we get or will have no effect on it? Um, talking with our underwriter right now, again, because one of versus five parcels or, or assessment areas, um, we're expecting little impact. But uh, uh, I think the other criterion, the other factors that I had already mentioned, those also play into the interest rate. But uh, we're at three to one because we had uh, discussions early on, even at three to one for all the parcels that we thought we could uh, successfully market those bonds too. So we're still, like we did talk to him earlier this morning, we're still estimating about six and a half percent right now. So you feel comfortable as far as with this actual three to one uh, and the rate you can get um, is within kind of the norm and there's enough coverage in there to ensure the success or? Values, the value to lien doesn't ensure success I know. going forward, but uh, we are comfortable with this one parcel at three to one, so. Okay. In terms of the, the buy down by the developer, without that being at three to one, if it was four to one, their contribution would be 957,000. If the board decides to allow it to be three to one for this particular parcel, their contribution or buy down is roughly 720 or 30,000. So, so there's a $200 swing, $200,000 swing for them. And the developer is also putting in an extra 350 related to the cost of the issuance going forward. So there's over 1.1 million by the developer into the project is another uh, metric that we look at when we decide whether to underwrite the bonds or not. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, um, Board do, Member Campbell. Do we feel that the six million is enough to do what needs to be done up there to continue the development of that area? Um, board Member um, Campbell, um, the the for those improvements that are outlined, the six million is is a not to exceed amount, and actually they're under construction contract today for less than that. So it will do all of the improvements that we outlined on that list. So you don't have to come back to us to ask that it now, be raised. We will be coming back on this issue a couple of more times. Uh, we'll be coming back about December 1st, and at that time, we're going to be adopting an, and, uh, an assessment resolution and a bond resolution. And then when all of the costs are in, we'll be back with a final assessment. And hopefully that'll be January, early February at the latest. So we expect to be before you two more times to do this. And that's just to follow the various statutory requirements uh, to, to actually okay. do this. I also would like to, because I forgot to in my <laughs> presentation, point something out for everyone in there. I mentioned the townhomes. There, there is an assumption of about 120 townhomes within this area and an additional for um, some property that is actually zoned, com or not zoned commercial, but planned to be commercial, an additional 50 townhomes were assumed to be there instead of commercial as a placeholder. So moving forward on that, that's a key assumption in case that that's an area of concern for everyone. Right, board, uh, board member Osborne. Uh, Larry, the, um, just to clarify, parcels 9.4, 9.5, and 9.6, I know they're platted here, but are there actual homes there? These, um, those have not been built, correct? There are, my understanding is that all of this property is owned either by the developer or by uh, one builder that has a con contractual interest in it. At the time that the bonds are sold, everyone, or at the t when we have the various hearings there, and including the final assessments, everyone who has an interest in that property has a right to speak at a public hearing. And that is why if a sales contract takes place, that person with that sales contract would have a right to speak at that point in time. I just, I but just, I don't expect it. Okay, that's what I'm making sure of, that this is not going to be a surprise to some new homeowner there that now all of a sudden they have another $667 to pay. So really, this is a lot like Palm Valley where, um, where I live. I think I, I'm in two different CFD districts that I pay on.
correct, and that's how they'll be seeing this on their, their tax statement? That's how they will see mm -hmm. the $1 charge that I was talking about will look identical to each of the two that you have in Palm Valley. Originally, there were assessments in Palm Valley. They tended to get paid off when the builder built the house. So I don't think anyone literally got the bill for it every six months. Okay. This one will look a little different because it'll show us a separate line item on their property tax bill, but it will show the, the amounts needed for this assessment. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Larry. That was, I think, very enlightening. Are there any speaker cards? No, Chairman Lord. All right, is anybody in the audience who would like to speak? All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. Will the city clerk please read resolution EMRCFD 14 093 by title only, please? Adopt resolution EMRCFD resolution 14 093 approving the feasibility re report relating to the acquisition, construction, and financing of certain improvements benefiting the district providing that the proposed improvements will be performed and special assessment revenue bonds Montecito Assessment District No. 2, Series 2014, will be issued under the provisions of Title 48, Chapter 4, Article 6, Arizona Revised Statutes, and all amendments thereto. Thank you. Can I please have a motion and a second? So, so moved. Second. I heard a, a motion by a Board Member Laura Tano and a second by Vice uh, Chair Fazillo. Uh, open for board discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Board Member Loritano? Aye. Board Member Campbell? Aye. Board Member Stipp? Aye. Board Member Homan? Aye. Vice Chairman Fazillo? Aye. Board Member Osborne? Aye. Chairman Lord? Aye. Passes 7-0. Before we go to the second part, I'd like to just announce that board member Stipp is now at the dais. And thank you. I know it was difficult to get here this evening. Appreciate you seeing you. All right, uh, 6.12. Will the district clerk please read resolution EMRC FD 14 094 by title only? Adopt resolution EMRC FD resolution 14 094. For declaring its intention to acquire and or construct certain infrastructure improvements forming Montecito Assessment District Number 2, determining that special assessment revenue bonds will be issued to finance the costs and expenses thereof, and declaring the improvements be, more, be of more than local or ordinary public benefit, and that the costs of said improvements will be assessed upon the assessment district providing that the proposed improvements will be performed and district assessment revenue bonds issued under the provisions of Title 48, Chapter 4, Article 6, Arizona Revised Statutes, and all amendments thereto. Thank you. Can I please have a motion and a second? I move. Second. I heard a motion by Board Member um, Osborne and a second by Board Member Campbell. Open for board discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Board Member Campbell? Aye. Board Member Stipp? Aye. Board Member Homan? Aye. Vice Chairman Pazillo? Aye. Board Member Osborne? Aye. Board Member Loritano? Aye. Chairman Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. All right, let's go to the third bar, uh, part. Will the district clerk please read resolution EMR CFD 14 095 by title only, please? Adopt resolution EMR CFD resolution 14 095 ordering the public infrastructure project performed as described in EMR CFD resolution 14 094. Thank you very much. Could I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. I had a motion by uh, Board Member Campbell and a second by Board Member Stipp. Open for uh, board discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Board Member Homan? Aye. Vice Chairman Pazillo? Aye. Board Member Osborne? Aye. Board Member Loritano? Aye. Board Member Campbell? Aye. Board Member Stipp? Aye. Chairman Lord? Aye. Passes 7-0. Uh, well, since we don't have any reports or current events and the manager doesn't have any input, um, does the board have any inquiries of staff before I uh, dismiss this? No inquiries? Adjourn. Um,
the meeting, and then you have a break till six. Oh. No, we have another. No, we work have session. another work session. Oh, session. oh, oh, we're going to go work session. one. Oh, okay. All right.